what is so different in LSTM or recurrent neural networks that is not present in artificial neural networks or other algorithms. The key concept is back propagation through time. Okay. So sharing my screen. If you were to take this data and do the predictions using an artificial neural network, how you will do it? See, so when you are using artificial neural network, you will be defining certain layers. Let's say the input layer. Okay. And then the hidden layer and the hidden layer number two, and then the output layer. Okay. And then you will be doing the prediction. So how you will be learning this data? You, let's say you have this column of price on this date, the price was this on this date, the price was this so on and so forth. So you can convert this data into uh, this kind of a supervised data set where price at time T can be predicted based on the price at time T minus one, T minus two, T minus three, T minus four. Okay. So how my algorithm will learn. So one, one, two, zero, one, one, five, zero, seven, zero, six, zero. Where is it coming from? The first row. So it will say, okay, this is my input and one, one, eight, zero is my output. So the prediction will be compared with Y, which is one, one, eight, zero. So let's say it predicted one, one, seven, three. So you'll compare the error. Okay. And then you will do the back propagation. Okay. And then you will learn the next row and the third row and the fourth row, so on and so forth. And you'll finally arrive at the final weights of all of these connections. Like essentially, if I ask you naturally, if you, if, if I want to predict for 18th Jan, how much the stock price will be the most natural reaction that you will give me that, okay, what was the price the previous day, previous to previous day, previous to previous day, or maybe you, you'll take the average of all of these three, right? By average of last four or last five. That will be your natural reaction. That should be your natural reaction. Correct. You look at the past data, like how the stock has been doing. And based yeah. on that, only the future data will be determined. Like even when you make the uh, investment decisions, you look at the data and you try to see, okay, how the stock has been doing. Is it below then like the most basic fundamental analysis would be, is it below the 52 weeks average or above the 52 weeks average? If yes, it will have the tendency to go towards the average. If it is low, then let us invest. It will come to the average and I'll make some profit. Okay. So in time series also, the same thing happens. So the auto regression, this concept is also known as auto yeah, arima. Yeah, you regress based on its previous values. So this single column data, I'm converting this data into multiple columns or predictors that I can utilize. And it is a fair way of transforming data that, okay, the last four values, I'm predicting the fifth last four values. I'm predicting the fifth. So I can generate multiple such examples, and then I can pass this data to ANN to learn. So then the model will get trained for asking last four values. So in this scenario, for example, it is asking the last four values. And based on that, it will tell me what was the prediction for the next day. Okay, this is the normal way of learning using ANN. Key thing to note down here is when you do supervised machine learning, as you mentioned very correctly, the predictors are independent. I assume as my one of the uh, uh, basic assumptions of machine learning that every predictor is independent of each other. But is it the scenario in stock market? Is it the scenario in stock prices? No, no, no. no, no. The prices are dependent on each other. So there is a dependency of 1120 with 1150. They may not be exactly correlated with each other. Okay. But 1170 affects 1160. 1160 affects 1180. Okay. 1150 is affected by 1120. So there is some relationship between the type of variations that you have seen previously to the next value. Okay. This is something which doesn't get captured so explicitly when you use this kind of an approach where you pass the data as independent variables. A recurrent neural networks or LSTMs try to learn this 
interdependencies between the inputs like how 1120 is affecting 1150 is affecting 1170 is affecting 116 and 1180 how 1120 value is affecting all the other values this interdependency is actually learned using rnns or lsms okay so recurrent neural networks essentially will try to learn each and every input separately if i show the exact same input how lstms will learn we'll understand uh, about it just just try to visualize that this is the normal way but here i am passing one single row of data to the whole network in lstms what i'll try to do i'll uh, i'll try to define this whole network but i'll define it every time for every input so 1120 will be passed on to the whole network so once again here you can see neural number uh, hidden layer number 1 okay and hidden layer number 2 so 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 same architecture that you have 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 so these cubes that you see over here i have purposefully built it like this so that you can visualize its back propagation through time so how lstms or rnns learn this data is they pass one of the time steps this is time uh, this is at time t this is at time t minus 1 t minus 2 t minus 3 okay so at previous time steps how the values are affecting the other time steps that is learned in the lstms and rnns more effectively i am passing one value to the whole network okay and then getting an output and then passing that output as an additional input as an additional input to each one of the neurons okay so normal neurons how normal neurons function they get some inputs they produce the results like i'm passing like x1 and x2 to each one of the neurons x2 also over here uh, x3 also over here x4 also over here okay then it produces an output and then it goes to the next layer okay neuron uh, one doesn't know what neuron two is doing neuron two doesn't know what three is doing they are all acting independently all right or neuron number uh, uh, say 4 sorry 5 does not know what what exactly it did in the previous time step so rnns or lstms they back propagate through time back propagate through time how so here you are doing back propagation okay so you produced an error and you are back propagating and you are changing the weights for all of these layers okay when you back propagate in rnns or lstms what you try to do is you calculate the error over here then you back propagate here at time t minus 1 then you back propagate for time t minus 2 then you back propagate time t minus 3 t minus 4 you back propagate multiple times as com as uh, compared to the normal rnns where you back propagate once for all the inputs here you back propagate multiple times so this is the concept that helped us to understand the relationship of every input with <clears throat> the other time stamps or the other time inputs as also compared to the target time stamp or the t time stamp so how this 1120 is affecting 1180 and also affecting 1150 and 1170 this is learned by these neurons because they give their inputs back to each other so one of the key things about the rnn or lstm neurons is when they produce an output they pass the same result to themselves so for example like when over here <clears throat> this is producing a result okay so the same result will be given as an input 
to the same neuron. Let's say neuron number one, neuron number one here in time step t minus two. So this network that you have over here, this is replicated multiple times. So this is the same network, same network, same network, same network, but it is repeated multiple times. So instead of consuming all of the inputs together, it consumes the input one at a time. Since 1120 was present at time t minus four. So let me learn about time t minus four individually. Then I'll pass that as an input to time t minus three. Sorry, this is incorrect. T minus t minus four, t minus three, t minus two, t minus one. Yeah. So when this provides a the, when this produces an output, this output is given back to itself the same neuron in the next time step for learning. Then it produces an output. The time, uh, this output is given to itself. This is also neuron number one. And it takes the same input uh, of what it produced as an output. So every neuron has an additional input in the previous time steps. In the normal setting, the neurons just receive the input from the input layer and then they forward propagate and pass on the results in RNN or LSTMs, they also listen to what they have produced pre in previous time steps. So here the neuron number one will understand what did it produce while learning the 1120 value. Then this neuron, same neuron will also understand, okay, in the previous time steps, I learned 1150. So the output I gave, let me look at it. How is it affecting 1170? So every input essentially learns the interdependencies of each other before learning it against the target variables value. And, and in this manner, I am able to learn the dependencies between the values in a better way as compared to the normal ANN where I assume that these are individual independent predictors that are affecting the target variable.